So this is ZLR, my take on the uh, Norns program MLR. Um, what it is is a four track uh, looper. It is mono in to stereo out using the left input coming out the left and right outputs. Um, I'm going to start on the second page just so I don't ignore it uh, and then focus on what's going on on the first page. On the second page you have a slew parameter for each track so you can set different slew rates for moving between different pitch speeds or you can turn the slewing off. Um, there are start and stop parameters so you can trim loops to your liking. Uh, and there are PAM parameters uh, for setting the stereo field. Um, and I particularly would suggest that combining the front page with some MIDI controls over the PAN parameters might be pleasing. Um, but also perhaps the start and stop parameters and the slew parameters. Uh, there's only so much that can be done via this sort of UI integration um, which is pretty CPU costly. So let's talk about what's happening here. There are four tracks. Each of these lights represents one of or each of these lanes represents one of the tracks and the lights represent the speed that it's moving at. The center point is uh, no change. Um, it goes up a fifth, up an octave, and up two octaves, down a fifth, down an octave, and down two octaves. I could not find any documentation that said exactly what the speed parameters of uh, MLR were. That's what I seem to hear when I listen to some demos. So what's happening is is that there's a, a a way to record the loops but then also record automation of the changes in the pitch and speed on top of them um, so I'm gonna just unmute a loop uh, real quickly to stop the automation you press regular speed twice and you can resume automation by holding down the middle stomp switch and pressing the middle stomp, uh, the zero speed position again. But I want to stop this. So when it's blue on this side, you have control over recording the automation. So you can turn that on. Pressing the left stomp switch will take you back to audio recording and you can in fact record a track while the automation is going on and it'll be applied to the new track. Now one thing you might notice is that the automation is not quantized to the track. Um, there is a way to do this in Zoya, but it's extraordinarily CPU expensive. Getting four tracks would be impossible. I'm not sure you could get two tracks doing it. Um, this is not the best example. I wasn't necessarily using it to, to show off my ability to record a loop. Um, but you can record into any of the buffers and you can record automation into any of the buffers. Um, and you know because the two aren't quantized to one another 
there's an advantage in that um, while it doesn't lead to necessarily always the results you want, it does lead to results that evolve over time. Uh, and obviously if you have a good ear and a sense of timing, you can get them pretty close if you're, you know, recording your automation. Um, but it, it, you know, it's not foolproof in that regard. Um, so down here we have play controls. When they're off, the track doesn't play. When they're on, it does play. This is actually kind of a cheat, because what it does is not, in fact, uh, mute the track or even stop it. What it does is it takes the speed down to um, 3%, which is below what most speakers can reproduce. Uh, but if you have some really deep bass extension, that might be a problem for using this patch. Uh, but again, that's really um, low amplitude. I haven't been able to pick up anything recording uh, into my interface or, or through my own speakers when I use this. I suppose it might also be a problem if you started with a really high-pitched source like a whistle or something like that. Uh, and then there are reverse buttons for each track. Um, but, you know, the, the big point here is the, uh, I think, the recording and the automation. Um, so if you compare that to something like Airport Loops, which is another four-track looper. Uh, it has a lot more features. Um, there's a reverb send. There is uh, a level control. There are, um, you know, faders or pseudo-faders for the, the tracks. And, you know, the, the idea there is that UI comes at a cost, right? Not just uh, the automation. The automation is not cheap CPU-wise, but it, it's not extraordinarily expensive. It's the combination of the automation with this sort of uh, UI setup. So, um, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, along with this patch, I am, uh, and I think it's best to use this in performance mode, which I just exited, because the push buttons along the bottom can attach to the UI buttons up here and cause havoc. It's not the worst thing that could ever happen, but it, you know, it's not great either. Uh, so I'm just going to save that. Along with this patch, I am including the sketches that I did um, in preparation for putting that all together. So what I did was I came up with a bunch of different sketches for UI interactions that I hope to be able to do. And a lot of them didn't make it into that patch, but they might be interesting to you or, or an opportunity for you to learn more about how to use UI elements. So the idea for these first two pages uh, were uh, a way to visualize start and stop points. So these would be put in a row um, across. There, there are eight push buttons and essentially what it does is it uses a little bit of logic and a uh, a tiered sample and hold. This is the same sort of um, radio button, option button uh, thing that, that exists in airport loops and a bunch of my other patches. Uh, it uses a second sample and hold to remember what the previous sample and hold position was, and then it takes the lowest position and sends that to the start parameter of the loop. Um, and it takes the highest and sends that to the length parameter of the loop, or would have, uh, had this made it into the patch. It's a little bit wonky because it, it 
it just goes on what the next thing pushed is. It doesn't have, you know, you, you can't um, necessarily trim it in the way you might like. Uh, but if you're careful about how you use it, you could use that as a start stop parameter thing that would be very quick to dial in. Um, but it was CPU costly. And, and beyond that, I think, uh, you know, the MLR with the grids uses a 16 step parameter to do this. Eight is not a great resolution really for trimming a loop, I don't think. Um, so that's one. This is, in fact, the the heart of the the automation and, and loop recording that did make it into the patch. Uh, the only difference is it has a VCA because at the time I thought I had room for a VCA. Um, and you can look into that. It uses a CV looper to automate the the you know playback parameters um this was a second attempt to come up with a cheaper way of showing start and stop points these are ui buttons and uh basically if you look as you go through the start parameter it's connected to fewer and fewer ui buttons and as you go through the stop parameter it's connected to more and more UI buttons and where their outputs overlap uh, the UI buttons are lit up you know and where they don't overlap they're in such a way that the UI button is um, between two colors so it doesn't show up uh, and then this is a part that I, I plan to work on maybe sometime this weekend, uh, what it was going to be was a pan, an automated panner. Um, hold on. Right now it's being weird. Because this is... So it would work, you know, either you could use it live to move the panning around, but it could also be used um, in the same way that the uh, pitch uh, is used. To, except for there's something wrong going on here. Okay, let's try this again. So you can use it to automate panning. Right. And you would use that in the same way uh, that you can use the, the pitch automation in uh, the ZLR patch. Um, obviously, it's still got a little bit of a buggy behavior there. But I'll get that sorted soon enough. And, and I'm hoping to create a pan sequencer sort of thing with this. Um, but again, you know, I'm including these because I thought they were interesting experiments in how to integrate UI into design um, and maybe would be useful for others to dissect. Thank you.